Don't fast forward. Please don't. No. It's the very, very first episode of 2024, and I have something really, really cool to tell you. What? We have a new sponsor. We do, and this is this is my dream come true sponsor, <laughs> for real. It is. We, we, we know a, it is. A coffee sponsor, and not only a coffee sponsor for No Simple Road, but a deadhead family coffee sponsor. Wow. That's right. Welcome Northbound Coffee Roasters to, to the, the No, no Simple, Simple Road family. family. Yeah. They are owned and operated out of Mount Shasta, California by our friends Keith and Jen, who just so happen to have s- over 600 shows between the two of them. And really, I mean, thing about having a Grateful Dead coffee sponsor on No Simple Road, it just, it fits so perfectly. And meeting them and tasting their coffee was the thing that sold me. Talking to Keith on the phone was amazing. I felt like I had met a long lost brother, but before I ever met Keith, I tasted the coffee that comes from Northbound and I was completely blown away. I was like, this is the coffee we need to have as a sponsor for No Simple Road. So they specialize in specialty organic coffees with a wide variety of roast profiles, blends and single origin offerings to match the taste of anybody who enjoys a quality cup of coffee. So what you're going to do is you head over to northboundcoffee.com to learn more and place your order right now, right now, northboundcoffee.com right now. They ship anywhere in the United States and their coffee is always roasted to order to guarantee the freshest cup. And you're going to use the code no simple road at checkout for free shipping on your first order of any size anywhere in the U S that's a pretty dope deal. Also, their son writes their newsletter, so you need to sign up for the newsletter to get additional discounts and see what's going on behind the curtain over there. They got some really cool stuff. And you can even join a coffee club. They have three, six, and 12-month subscriptions, so you're sure to keep it coming. That's Ooh. right. And hey, if you're a deadhead and you're a coffee head, this is it. If you always wanted to be a headlight on a northbound train but didn't have the fuel, now you do. Northbound Coffee Roasters. Welcome to the No Simple Road family. One of our favorite sponsors is back with us, Sunset Lake CBD. CBD. Yeah. If you're looking for CBD that actually does what CBD is supposed to do, look no further than our friends over at Sunset Lake. Let me break it down. Break it down, Mel. They're sustainably farmed, meaning they avoid pesticides and use sustainable farming practices to preserve the land for future generations. One. Two, farm to table. They ship the CBD products straight from their door in Vermont directly to your door, wherever you're at. Oh, that's cool. And third party tested. They test everything with the third party to ensure quality, dosage, and safety. You got to go over and check out sunsetlakecbd.com. They have so many products. Break it down for them. Well, they've got some new stuff going on. Like they, they always had pre-rolls, but now they got really cool packaging for it. And you can get CBD pre-roll flights of all their flavors. You can get the heavy hitter flight that also throws in some of their Keith blunts. They have a new CBD recovery body lotion. I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. And what was the other? The, the other one with Arnica. The extra strength muscle rub, 3,000 milligram with 5% lidocaine. So look, oh yeah, lidocaine. if you're sore, this is the stuff you want to rub on your body to make those aches and pains go away. They even have CBD infused coffee. So you can have coffee without the little jitter that you get from caffeine and you have it in the morning and you start your day off right. Your body feels lubricated. You're, you know, you're going to sleep good. Yeah. It's, and also they have... If you kind of forget to reorder, they've got subscriptions. And they're giving the No Simple Road family 20% off. 20% off. Put in the promo promo code code NSR20 when you're checking out at sunsetlakecbd.com. You're going to get 20% off your entire order. NSR20. And don't forget those cute little gummy bears. That's right. Sunsetlakecbd.com. One of our favorite sponsors is back. No Simple Road. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. I'm ready. No more ahems <coughs> or anything like that. What were you going to say, Apple? No. Oh. Hey, hey now, No Simple Road family. 
Welcome back. It's Apple. It's 2024. And Aaron. And Mel. My voice is Welcome. fucked, everybody. I apologize. I don't know what's going on over here. That frog is in there. Is that, that, that New Year's around the MSG? Yeah. I, <laughs> well, <laughs> we can get into that. But this week on No Simple Road, we have a very special guest. Yeah, we do. The one, the only, Caleb, Caleb Lee, Lee Hutchinson. Hutchinson. That's Woo! right. Caleb Lee Hutchinson. You Welcome, may know Caleb. him from such things as American Idol and, and The Voice and Southern Galactic. His new album, Southern Galactic, that is out now everywhere on all the streaming platforms that you're going to go listen to when we're done with this episode, or you're going to pause it right now and go listen to it. And, and then you're going to come back to the episode and you'll be like, holy shit, this is Caleb Lee Hutchinson. Man, does he have a voice. He's got a lot to say. He's got a voice that is like butter, like deep butter. And yeah. He, yeah, he's deep. He is a deep cat. Yeah. And this is another one of those No Simple Road episodes where we went a lot deeper than I would have thought we were going to, um, especially uh, just talking to somebody for the very first time we we get into some mental health stuff um but caleb is no stranger to talking because he also has a podcast called the green couch podcast that is true and so he's into that he's into those long-winded conversations it's like hitting a home run when you're doing a podcast and you interview somebody that is not like when you're interviewing a musician but they also have a podcast because they know how to talk very familiar. Show that they're not giving you like, yeah, it was cool answers. Yeah, and well, and, and you'll hear it here. Like th- this gets deep. And thanks again, Caleb, yeah. for sharing your story Truly. and going deep with us. You guys are going to hear this, and it's very cool that he shares this experience for a lot of people out there. That this will mean a lot to. Yeah, you know what's cool, like. If you really wanted to get to know somebody, a, an artist, and you scroll through our, our catalog, I really feel like you could have an idea of who this person is. What no, makes you, them tick? Yeah, you're not going to be BFFs or anything, but you're definitely going to have a better sense of who this musician or this artist is that you're digging their stuff. And I think the thing about Caleb that struck me most is how brave he is to talk about what he spoke about with us here yeah, and to just bring it out into the light with no, like no bullshit behind no. it. Just, just opened right up Candid. and, and you know, especially with the stigma behind mental health stuff and, and eating stuff as, as, as men, you know, it, it can be weird to talk about that. And, uh, I just, he's brave as shit, man. And I, I give him a lot of props and Absolutely. I'm stoked that we had to, had the time to sit down with him and, and do this. It was a uh, super dope. And I implore all of you to go check out Southern Galactic. You are going to love this album. If you, uh, are a fan of good music, which you probably are if you listen to No Simple yeah, Road. Yeah, I would hope so. And you can head on <laughs> over to YouTube and catch some of the things that he's done on YouTube also. Yep. And if you want to check out what's going on in his universe, you can go to CalebLeeHutchinson.com and find out you know, more about him. There's the Green Couch Podcast, his mailing list, and his tour info and all that stuff up on his website. So that's where and you go to find out more info about Caleb. You can also go over and follow him on Instagram at Caleb Lee Music to check out what's going on with him all the time. And I would also encourage you to go when you go to the streaming platforms look go back and start at the beginning too with his 2018 johnny cash heart single and look, look at his face on the he he was he, a little start, tiny baby he started very young but the voice that comes out of him is amazing and we talk about it here too he also did a cover of Simple post Man. malone's better oh, better yeah. now <laughs> oh yeah which it it, it like works so well in the country As format, country tune. I, I, it's dope. And the album cover for the single is awesome. So here we go, everybody. Another year of No Simple Road has begun. And I am stoked that it is starting this year with Caleb Lee Hutchinson. We have a lot going on in the No Simple Road universe. We have, I think, seven interviews scheduled for the month of January. And we um, have still some from left over from last year. Yeah. And uh, we got some some heavy hitters coming your way yeah, we do. along with Caleb. So 
buckle up and stay tuned. We got a lot of good stuff coming, coming for you. And if you fast forwarded past the beginning of the episode, we have a new sponsor that is my favorite sponsor ever, Northbound <laughs> Coffee Roasters. They are with us. It's a coffee sponsor. If you know me, you know I'm a fucking coffee fanatic nerd. And I think I have met my match in that they are deadheads and they are the biggest coffee nerds I have ever met. So you know that the coffee is coming from them is so, going to be primo shit. So don't be jealous other sponsors. It's just that they, they, they make <laughs> coffee and that's Aaron's thing. Yeah. These are Aaron's opinions. Well, Aaron yeah. said it's his favorite. <laughs> yeah. So we'll leave it at that. The thoughts and opinions <laughs> expressed love, by Aaron do not represent <laughs> the thoughts and opinions by all of No Simple Road. Okay? I love all of our yeah, sponsors. I do too. So. Yeah, I, you know, yeah, I know. It just begs repeating that I'm excited. Well, and you got me going down the rabbit hole with that. I mean, they really get an you, you want to know like the region your coffee comes from the altitude it's grown at like everything i mean they break it down well, yeah. and they, they tell a story to go along with each blend one cool thing about no simple road and what has been happening it's like we'll talk about something behind the scenes that we want to do or someone that we want to get or whatever and then like whatever be it a few weeks days or months later even we get it. There's very few things that we've asked for, like behind the scenes at No Simple Road, that we haven't gotten. It 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 uh, it speaks to uh, and, manifestation and tenacity. And it, well, and it it happens not organically, like there's no effort, but organically in the sense that it's not hard or tried or fighting. It's no, just man. persisted. No. That's it. We've persisted in the sponsor or in the guest, and they've happened Deadhead well, coffee say, we're, we're yeah. also we're also very reasonable in our wishes and our requests that's true you know we're not like we're not like crazy. elon musk let's be on yeah, the show yeah elon musk <laughs> which would be cool elon Tesla, if you're listening or, or, I'm, I'm down to have you on that would be super dope i'm, I'm great dude, to have he a had conversation those, made you. those robots i'm fucking scared of those robots it, dude let's not even get into all that well the, the I robots mean, I'm are just taking saying, over ai is I'm here i'm not even talking person. about ai i'm talking about the literal robot people that he's making <laughs> i'm scared of all the things those people do yeah yeah <laughs> so here's the deal everybody we're gonna do the business you ready are you ready mel I'm ready. Are you I'm, sure? I'm ready for the business. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to give you the business, Apple. Give me the business. <laughs> give me the business. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just uh, <laughs> Go to nosimpleroad.com and sign up for our newsletter. Get yourself some No Simple Road merch, a tarot reading by Mel and I. Find out what's going on in our world. We have a, a calendar of events. Mel and I are, are we're going to see Mo. We're going to be at the Mo show here in a oh, few weeks. Okay. Uh, Mel and I will be in Mexico for the fish in, in February. And we got a few other things coming up on the calendar. Daniel Donato, at Cosmic Country, is going to be playing here. We're going to that show. So if you want to come hang out with the No Simple Road crew, you'll know where we're going to be. Um, you can go to, um, let's see, help me out, patreon.com forward slash No Simple Road. That is how you can support us. What do we got going that over put, on that Patreon? That puts gas in the tank and keeps the bus going. We got. I'm doing weed reviews. I'm doing cinematic adventures. Posting when we go to shows. I like those. Yeah, those are fun. I just did one today. I did another card of the day. Um, you know, pulling either a tarot or an oracle card and doing a little explanation for the family. We got Andrew sacks of some sexy art pulling the dopest jams from around the jam band world for you and, and then, then we have connor connor is hooking up these grateful dead deep cuts and jerry garcia band dope stuff so there's a lot going on and you can join for free to see what's going on so go to patreon.com forward slash no simple road now and then also i was just going to say on patreon like if you're on there and you're checking out especially if you're new and there's something that you would like to hear about us or see us do or something throw it out there and see yeah. what we can do yeah that's that's we're a good idea we're accommodating we're, we're amenable yeah we'll yeah, do cause stuff because I, I like doing the cinematic adventures and but not everybody is as into movies as me and i am kind of strange in my pick sometimes Dude, <laughs> what was that movie you had us watch the other day part of Bo is afraid don't with don't Joaquin anybody go watch this. phoenix well unless you like weird shit and uh yeah and like, we never finished it so it could have turned out good it didn't i have not finished it yet but i've talked to a couple of people have had it's one of those ones that are like if you stick through the whole thing then you kind of get it and it has a message and stuff but it's almost three hours and it oh, is wow. it's nerve-wracking I, I gotta say it hurt my brain it was terrifying anyway here's the deal 
We need a January review for No Simple Dang. Road on Apple Podcasts, everybody. So we did not get a December no, present. No, no December. No, we were, we were naughty. Christmas. We didn't we, get nothing for Christmas. Yeah. Well, I don't know what to do. All I can do is ask and, and put it out there into the universe and hope that the energy comes back in some form yeah. as a review on Apple Podcasts. If, if, that, if your ears are tickling or hot or you get that feeling in your belly like I'm talking to you right now, that means it's your turn. And yeah. if you've already left a review, then don't let your ears get hot. You did it. Yeah, Thank you thanks. so much. It's one of the 300 something reviews that we've got. But we need those other people to be like, you know what? My ears are tickling. A, My fingers need to start typing. Let's do this. And same thing. Like, like, like we have one a month. That's 12 year. One a month makes us happy. Yeah, Because we have something to read and it helps, you know, get it in that algorithm pop up. Dude, and, these algorithms are vicious and they, they really do are. not allow our podcast to be seen. And if you're spending time listening to our podcast and think it's worthy, somebody else probably thinks it too. And all you need to do is be like, hey, listen, it's worthy. Boom. <laughs> There it is. Uh, Please call 971-808-1524. That is your three minutes of fame on No Simple Road. And you can say whatever you want. And let's see what you got for 2024. No Simple Road family, 971-808-1524. I was going to say there's got to be some people with some review. I know listeners out there went to shows for New Year's and stuff. Was anybody at Game Hinge? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Was anybody at Billy Strings? We'd oh, yeah. like to hear about okay. it. Well, let's hear about it, folks. Yeah. 971-808-1524. And hey, last but not least, tell somebody you love about No Simple Road so we can spread the mycelial network of the No Simple Road family off into the universe and pulsate love and light into the cosmos so that everything is wonderful and unicorns dance and sing in your eyeballs. Yeah, we like that. Yeah, do that. That's okay? Cool. All right. So we're going to get them all to this interview with Caleb Lee Hutchinson. You ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Without further ado, the No Simple Road crew gives you Caleb Lee Hutchinson. picture that's on your on your thing before before it comes up <laughs> how how old were you in that picture man i think that was i think i was 12 maybe 12 <laughs> or 13 i remember that day i was playing it was like a little town festival type thing uh-huh. and i was playing i believe it was simple man and halfway through there was like a little canvas tent over me and it was really windy and it just started falling <laughs> And it was probably like my second or third time playing live. And I remember I looked at my dad and he's like, keep going, don't stop. So by the end of the song, the canvas was like on my head. (laughs) (laughs) One one of my favorite songs ever, too. It's a simple man. Oh, my God. Well, you're God didn't like it that day. No, <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't happening. That day. Well, you weren't a man yet. You're a little kid. <laughs> I was being a simple kind of kid. That's right. Yeah. Caleb, I'm Aaron, man. What's up? Aaron, I'm just happy to be here, man. I feel very underdressed. That is a sick shirt. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's just a hoodie. And actually, man, I'm like, 
this is kind of what I slept in and stuff. So it's I'm like just, pajamas, if I'm being honest, <laughs> almost like pajamas. It's, it's beautiful. Thanks, it's brother. Beautiful. And then I, I'm I'm Apple. Apple. Yes. <laughs> and then I'm Mel. Welcome. Mel. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, man. All of you. Super, super stoked to have you hang out with us for a little while today, man. Where where are you, Caleb? I'm in Nashville, Tennessee Nashville. at the moment. So you're not going to know this reference. It's fine. Doesn't he remind you of Bryce? Yes. 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 Yeah. We have a really great friend. And I, I thought the second you came on, you looked a, a lot like you could be his brother. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a Southern boy thing, I think. And it's a smoke show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of is. He would, he would agree with you. He, yeah. I think. He, 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 is, he is a Southern charmer. That's for sure. Yeah. Out, out yeah. here on the West Coast, he gets a lot of attention from the ladies. <laughs> I'm here. I'm not here. And I, I'll tell you this, too. It's really funny because I get messages sometimes where people are like, you look exactly like my son. He's so good looking. Oh. And, then, and then I look at him. And I'm like, <laughs> That's what you think I look like? Yeah, I'm sorry. I got, oh. Yeah, I'm like, oh, beautiful boy. <laughs> well done. Thanks for the message. Have a, have a nice life. He's a handsome kid. So, so, Caleb, what do you got going on right now, man? What's what's going on for the holidays for you? Well, wait, first when we oh. have him introduce himself. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah introduce yourself and tell our, our listeners like who you are and what you do so they're familiar. Yeah. Listeners. My name is Caleb Lee Hutchinson. I hail from Dallas, Georgia. I'm a country singer, songwriter. Um, I currently reside in Nashville, Tennessee. I just put out an album called Southern Galactic that I'm begging everyone within a 50 mile radius to listen to. Um, and I'm very, very happy to be listened to today. And uh, these fine folks. And I've been told there's a, a man named Bryce who's very handsome. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. What do you what do you got going on for the holidays, man? What are you doing right now? Man, it is uh right now I've I've made the mistake of wanting to like keep working and writing towards the end of the year. So I'm doing quite a few bouncing back and forths from Georgia to here. Uh so like this weekend I'll be going home for a, a Christmas function and then coming back to write and then headed back down. So you know, a, apart from just trying to figure out what to tell my my dear mama that I want for Christmas, not a whole lot. <laughs> trying to make something worth listening to. You, you want a number one album? That's what you want for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Like, how about socks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a new mark. moms love getting kids socks. <laughs> I love receiving socks. Oh, my mom got me like a like two packs of socks, and I spent a good part of my day just going through the sock drawer. Uh, it it really, I can't tell you how much better I felt afterwards. Yes, get rid of those holy oh, yeah, ones, those old- the stretched out <laughs> ones, mismatched ones. Bang! And, you're and out. I know that this is super <laughs> rad for everybody listening, but when you put on a new pair of socks and then put on your shoes, it feels like you got new shoes, right? It's like one. Yeah, of those it feels, feels like you're in person. <laughs> yeah, kind of just a full new identity. Yeah. <laughs> beforehand but better right you can get more exactly. get more of a strut and everything like yeah i got new socks so caleb <laughs> you said you started playing fairly young that like that was like one of the first times tell us about like the inspiration behind you starting to play or, or wanting to play even it's that time after the holidays in when there's just nothing going on there's no more <laughs> holidays it's good. some people call this time of the year the doldrums i've heard it called that before oh yeah is that where that could be? yeah the doldrums. the doldrums well here's the deal you don't have to be doldrumed out no our sponsor melt premium mushroom chocolates has the cure for the doldrums yeah it does head over to at melt mushrooms on instagram and hook yourself up with a nice chocolate bar or two or four or ten Nine different flavors. Try that pretzel milk chocolate one. I know, right? And hey, four grams of their sacred mushroom blend in every bar, plus other adaptogens and mushrooms in there. And each bar is organic, and they even have vegan options. It's pretty dope. They're so damn good. The peanut butter, the mint, and the coffee. Well, I, I could just name all nine of them. Yeah, they're just my, name all They're nine. all my favorite. <laughs> so here's the deal. You're going to go shoot them a DM at Melt Mushrooms, M-E-L-T-M-U-S-H-R-O-O-M-S. 
they are going to send you their menu. You're going to tell them that No Simple Road sent you, and then you guys are going to figure out what's going to happen after that. It's a whole thing. So go over and check out at Melt Mushrooms on Instagram. A cure for the doldrums. Yeah, it's weird because I never had like a another dream, even as a, a little, little kid. Really? I always just wanted to play music. I, I don't come from like a musical family or anything, but just kind of as soon as I saw it, as soon as I had consciousness enough to n- understand what I was seeing, I was like, oh, I want to do that. People can do that forever. And um, yeah, I started playing. I started singing when I was like eight. I think I did Whoa. my first singing in front of an audience thing when I was eight. Uh, I had a, a great uncle, God rest his soul, who was a huge music nerd uh, and and is a big part of why I now am one. And he like set up a PA system and like built a little stage in his basement for me. Aww. So I just spent like years just down there singing to my, my aunt every weekend. Oh, wow. Uh, and then, yeah, I started started playing guitar when I was 11. And like a month after I started playing guitar, I started playing live. And it's just, it's always been my my whole thing. So I'm I'm very one-dimensional in that aspect. No well, other dream. One month bef- like after you got a guitar, you were capable enough to do it? Yeah, I played uh, Jealous Guy by John Lennon at our, I think it was my sixth grade uh, we, we didn't have a talent show because it would hurt kids' feelings if they didn't win. Yeah. Right. So we had, we had a showcase. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it was like a month after I, I first picked up a guitar, uh, I played Jealous Guy, and then I played a Nirvana song for this girl while she sang that yeah, same night. Yeah, you did. I was, I was early into it. What? I saw you. I saw your post about well about forty five minutes ago now on Instagram of you uh, Nirvana Sunday messing around. Played it for Aaron. I was like, Aaron, check this out. And he was like, Holy shit! You, you yeah, that yeah, you sounded it. good, man. So Caleb, do you remember what like who it was that like you know got you sprung on music? With what like did you see something on TV or like did your parents take you to like a concert or like? What was that thing that was like, oh, my God, I could do this? I think it really starts with a karaoke machine. Uh, when we were, when I, I think I was like four or five, my, my granny got us a karaoke machine for Christmas. And we had a Johnny Cash CD and a Jesse McCartney CD mm-hmm. at the time. He was, he was blowing up. Uh, uh, and so I just like sat and sang along to the karaoke tracks. And I think that was kind of the moment wow. where I was like, I'm a singer. This is what I do. Uh, yeah. Hey, and when I'll start there. How lucky. I'm, I'm curious too. When, when did, did you have the baritone voice at eight years old or when, <laughs> when, when, did, when did that come into your life? No simple roads. Longest running sponsor shop tour bus is hard at work, fulfilling the needs of lot lizards and deadheads everywhere with the coolest grateful dead inspired merch ever on the planet in the history of things. We we say that they're our longest running sponsor, but we've been doing the show for six years. Yeah. And that's been five years of consistent sponsorship. Yep. And I just want to say thank you to Shop Tour Bus. They come out with these beautiful designs. They're supporting the community and they always have something going on. This is a real live Grateful Dead family run business. It is just a few people over there at Shop Tour Bus pumping out designs and creating these shirts themselves. And when they send them to you, they come with all kinds of extras and you may even get a Grateful Dead bootleg in your order. A bootleg. And these are the comfiest shirts. Our collection, my collection has grown over the years. And we had the pleasure of meeting the crew last year. Yes, we did. When they came to the house, which is one of our highlights of 2023. Absolutely. So go to shoptourbus.com or at shoptourbus on Instagram. You'll see what we're talking about. Order yourself something. If you want to put a special note in the comments when you're checking out, they can hook that up for whoever you're sending it to. If you're sending it to yourself just say hey i love me and do that and then put in the promo code no simple no road, simple road and you're going to get free shipping from our friends and family over at shop tour bus shop tour bus.com no initially my dream was um my dad is a super old school country fan and then like classic rock and my mom was a big like 80s hair metal kind of girl and so uh, they were both kind of fighting to see who the, like the cool parent would be when it came to showing me new music. Mm-hmm. I got really into Guns N' Roses. That oh. was like the first band. Yes. That, that was my favorite, Caleb. That was so my favorite. 
my mom gave me appetite for destruction and I learned the whole thing front to back and just tried to sing like Axl Rose. And then somewhere around that like 10, 11 range, I was like, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. Yeah, the voice drops. <laughs> yeah, my, my dreams of, you know, being the, the biggest Guns N' Roses cover band at the time, I thought it would be called Bullets and Thorns. Uh, that died. For- <laughs> Heck yeah, wow. I like that. I can see it. I can totally see it. <laughs> so yeah, I, I kind of look like Axel now, right? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Do you yeah. do you feel like learning the guitar was easy for you? Yeah, I think so. Well, it's interesting because my dad um, could play a few chords, you know, like G, C, and D, and he would always try to show it to me. But I think just because he was my dad. I was just like, ah, you know, like totally. I, I, saw, I saw him play stuff and I was like, how do you make it sound real good though? <laughs> and, yeah. And, and that's, and look, I, I love and adore my father, but like he would tell you, he's not, he's not going to play the guitar for you and convince you to want to be like him. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's fair. I was sitting, um, my, my aunt and uncle moved when I was like eight years old or so and lived, lived like, 10, 15 minutes away from us. And they had neighbors who would have like pickings is what we called them, where 15 people would come and sit in a circle in the living room and play guitar. And uh, I got to be friends with the kid that lived there. And so we'd go over there and just, you know, play Xbox or whatever, or go run around the woods and nearly die. And I would come back in and be like, man, they're, they're actually like making real music in here. Like it sounds like songs that's pretty cool. And so I would just sit and listen. And then eventually um, there was a guy who played Robbie Houston, still a good friend of mine. And I was like, is it easy to do that? And he's like, it could be. So he's like, here, put your fingers here. That's an E. And it was, it was Folsom prison. And I remember just being like, how do you do the bump, 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 (laughs) bump. And he showed it to me and I was like, Oh, that's super easy. That's, that's like hardly nothing. And I was like, man, maybe it's not as hard as I think it is. So I, but also I just had no other hobbies. So as okay. soon as I got the first bit of like, this is what it's like to play a song. I just was like, okay, I, I know this, these chords and I would just get on the internet and look up songs and, and just learn them all day. So I've pretty much wow. done that from then till now. Did, so did you um, at any point do like training, like, you know, go to school or get a teacher or anything like that? No, no. I just, I found the best teacher was playing with people who were a lot better than me. Wow. And, yep. And I've heard that. I was never scared of being like, wait a second, how'd you do that? And, you know, trying to just steal from them. That's a really open way to be. <laughs> yeah, like, man. Cause also performing at a young age, were you worried or scared or nervous or like anything back then, like performing? I think I've really uh, romanticized it because I was like kind of a heavy set kid and wasn't like super confident. But I was like, oh, if I just get on stage, I will be Mick Jagger. Uh, right. So it you know it became like my Trip. my place to get to you know have fun and not worry about all that stuff. So I, I honestly felt much more comfortable playing music in front of people than like talking to them. So this is your, wow. you're born to do this, yeah, this for sure. Your thing, man. And then for listening to you, well, for better or worse, I think yeah. for better, yeah, for, for better. sure. What, I'm hoping. I, I was going to bring you, you kind of touched on it right there too, being like a heavy set kid. I saw that about like you went through quite a transformation in losing like 80 something pounds. Yeah. I lost 140 pounds in a year. Say went, what? Wow. Holy cow. 320 to 180 and the bulk of which I did on national TV, which is really good for the human brain. Oh yeah. Really yeah. I'll bet that was a, amazing TV? for your self esteem and all yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. It was really cool. It was cool for me to figure out what my worth was, you know, Wow. which of course is how I look. So yeah, no <laughs> shit. Right. <laughs> what I got that messaging in quick. You that's, know? that's like, that's a, like literally losing an entire part of yourself. Being. I found a lot of them. Don't worry. Most of them's back. Not all of them. (laughs) (laughs) But wait a minute. On national TV, was it? American Idol. Oh, an American Idol. Yeah. Yeah. So, so tell, since Mel doesn't know the story. Yeah, I don't know the story. Because it started with the voice, right? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. So I was, I was just desperate to become a, a like singer and there was no kind of scene where I was growing up, no sort of like musicians around me that were doing, everyone I knew who played music just kind of did it for fun. Mm -hmm. So pretty early on, I told my dad I wanted to do this and I was, you know, playing at Mexican restaurants and bars if they let me in and all kinds of stuff. And then, yeah, the voice, I think I was 15 when that started and I was just like, I don't need to be in a high school daddy. I need to be in Hollywood. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm made for this. And so, yeah, we did the, we did the voice audition and um, yeah, that, that didn't work out, but I got to be on TV. So I came home and now the bars would, that said no said yes, which was very helpful. Okay. Uh, so I just played music through high school. Like I never um, had a real traditional job. I just played music every Friday, Saturday and, um was very fortunate to have people that would you know pay me decently to come play and um i got good at talking to people and forcing them to tip me mm -hmm. so i was doing all right and then was I this solo I, yeah yeah just solo, just acoustic. solo okay yeah and um i graduated high school and just kind of had that thing everybody does when they graduate high school like okay what am i gonna do with my life and I had no other interests or skills. And it, it made me very sad to think about having a cultivating, having to cultivate uh, a skill set that I was disinterested in, you know? Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Uh, I was, I was at my parents' house and it was right after I, I graduated and I'm having the whole like, oh, God, what do I do? Um, and my dad's like, hey, I was on Facebook and saw they're bringing back American Idol. Um, you want to go try that? I was like, I, I got nothing else going on. So right on dad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, and honestly, like my hope in the beginning was strictly just, you know, if I can meet some people that are like me and are wanting to move to Nashville or, or wanting to, you know, kind of make those next steps and maybe I can just find a, a group of people to do it with, or, you know, find somebody to, that knows something I don't. And, uh, yeah, ended up ended up going much further than I had anticipated. Pretty damn far, man. Runner up, I right? Got, I got every bit of, of TV time I could. So, um, yeah, job well done. Hell yeah, opinion. man! Congratulations, Dang. and you you happen to meet the love of your life as well. Uh well, well we thought that. Yeah, well, that was <laughs> that was an idea that we had. Okay. That was a love in my life for okay. sure. Okay, uh, but, yeah. right. fair enough. And I have since amicably parted ways with peace and love and gratitude. <laughs> Good. Well, that's, hey, that's the best way to do it, right? But I want to hear more about this um, journey on on that show and like what it did for you, like you know, growing because that's like right after high school. You said, yeah, immediately after. So, like, that's not a lot of time to like. I don't know. I don't even want to say experience in life, but like, yeah, you're going right from high school, right, jumping right into something that's pretty hardcore. No, it's true. I've ruined my developmental years for sure. <laughs> uh, it, you know, it was strange. Like I, I auditioned when I was 18 and then that, you know, went through that. And then went out to Hollywood by myself and it was very spooky and, and weird for me to, just be in that environment it's a and weird place, uh, man. Yeah. It's a very strange, strange area, especially, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I learned how to hide an accent really quick because I learned people looked at me like I couldn't speak English. Oh uh, my gosh. If I got too many y'all. Yeah. And, um, uh, so it, but no, it was, it was cool. And yeah, I met, met a girl that I dated for quite a few years who ended up winning the show and, uh, lost a lot of weight on television and stuff, but it was really cool. You know, I got to meet, like, I think, I think the fact that I went into that process and didn't have it in my mind that like, I'm going to become a mega star. I'm going to be Kelly Clarkson, but hairier. Like I never, <laughs> I never had that. So it was, it was kind of easy for me to just sort of spectate everything. And, and, um, you know, sometimes I look back on that and I'm like, man, how did I do that? And it's kind of because I didn't really think it was that big of a deal. Mm. Which oh. is weird. That's great. No, it, you know what? No, man, I think it, that that's the best way to psych yeah, yourself man. out, like positively, so that you can be your natural self 
and still have this cool experience. Well, and, and let's be let's be real too. In the grand scheme of things, apart from like making it in the business or whatever, none of that means anything anyway. It's a fucking TV show, right? Yeah. Like, and and I I'll tell you this too, because um, you know, I'm still really good friends with people that I met on that show. One of my buddies, Garrett, uh, he and I wrote three of the songs that were on my last record and we were just riding together yesterday. Like he's a brother to me. And I, there's so many people I met that I still love and adore. But one thing I did notice is like some of those people, this their first time playing in front of a crowd mm -hmm. was filmed for national television. And that was one thing where I think some people are going into it, looking at the cameras and going, my God, I'm singing to the world right now. And I was like, oh, that's what, like 200 people? I'm like, yeah, we're fine. I've like, done okay. that. Yeah. I've done it, you know? So I, I think like having the experience of playing to rooms that like kind of were never that interested in me, I was just like, <laughs> hell yeah, they have to listen. They, have to listen. <laughs> they are captive. Well, so you really yeah. kind of went about this in a different mindset because like being self-conscious and being overly like, you know, like you have to be perfect. You were just happy that it, they had to listen. So it like yeah. kind of cuts that like, you know, confidence thing out and you can just do your thing. Like that's a really great way to learn actually. Yeah. I think, I think the whole, cause you know, whenever the idol thing is brought up, one of the big questions is like, well, what's the best thing you got from it? Like, what'd you, what was the coolest thing you learned? And like, ultimately it's, I just don't really, to a point, I don't really care what anyone thinks. Like, obviously oh, yeah. I want people to like what I do and it, it, you know, that's awesome. But like, first and foremost, if I'm not happy with it, then I would hate for people to love something that I didn't love, you know? Ooh, so that's I, true. I think that's the big takeaway for me. Can you, you know? can you imagine the, like those artists that are working for a label or whatever and the labels like, changing what they're putting out and they they don't dig it and then that thing becomes the hit and then oh, now yeah. they've got to sing that song they hate forever man I've, I've met people who like don't like the thing they're known for oh Aww. and that but i mean granted they make a lot more money than me <laughs> but, but, but they're I, figuring it out but at what cost <laughs> yeah i get to eat my ramen with integrity that's you right. <laughs> so, yeah. so do we, Caleb. So yeah, yes. my soul. That's right. I love that. You know that. what? Good on you for having that attitude because, you know, Aaron and I, our daughter lives in LA and she's part of that entertainment world, not um, singing. Well, yeah, she's, yeah, she is but, but she went it in a different way. She's a model and, and an actress and she also sings and stuff like that. But, you know, it's hard to be, like you said, you learned how to get rid of that accent real quick. It really teaches you how to like pin up and tut, tuck here and on your own without them even telling you because you just see what the standard is. So you're trying to fit in. But you going there with a little bit of experience behind your back, even at 18, gave you an edge that maybe you didn't realize at the time. But in hindsight, really keeps you together as a person after yeah. all that's done, you know? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, it's, it's been a big learning curve and, uh, I think, you know, further into the process and stuff, it, it definitely got easier to kind of get psyched out about it and start thinking about it. And, you know, like I'd never received negative comments or positive comments for that matter, but like, <laughs> it's, it's really, it's really strange to go from like, I can do whatever I want on the stage and nobody really gives a shit. Mm -hmm. And then next thing I know, all my comments are like, Oh, of course he's still here in Trump's America. And I'm oh. just like, what happened? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? Like, yeah. Oh my God. This is the place we're going to make the stand at American Idol. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. With your white, skin and your guitar we've never seen that before and i'm like i didn't ask for this dude oh my god this gosh. is how i came so yeah, I'm, it's, uh, gosh it's yeah, no, it, <laughs> it got crazy and then after the show too like like i said i lost quite a bit of weight and uh i don't shy away from saying i did it in a very unhealthy way i wanted I'm, to ask about this yeah yeah i'm very very lucky um 
because I ended up getting like pretty ill. And uh, what'd you do? So wait, this was not prompted by the show. This was your own like this was, was prompted by my first breakup. So was this okay. like cocaine okay. and black coffee? <laughs> <laughs> no, no cocaine i've been told by trusted family members if i do coke i'll like it too much don't so do I it shouldn't. yeah don't, good yeah. job good, good job. for that's listening good. that's good family caleb good job how'd you pull this off uh i want to start off with a with a a, a disclaimer yeah. that this is bad and <laughs> did my health suffered okay. but i essentially i was still in high school and dated a girl through high school. She was like my first girlfriend, mm -hmm. you know, and it's small town. So I'm like, we're going to get married for sure. Cause we have to. And, um, for, like the, the relationship ended and she very quickly found a, a new flame and that hurt my little feelings real bad. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was, it's probably like, yeah, I think I was 320 at my heaviest and I'm, I'm six, three. So like I carry it all right, but I was, I was a pretty big boy and I, I'd never touched a gym and didn't play athletics or anything through high school. Cause I was playing music. So it wasn't a very intimidating 320. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah I got you. <laughs> okay. And, uh, I've been so, there too, by the way. Yeah, of course we all have. Yeah. And the, uh, I, I started talking to this girl who went to the gym and she was like, you should go to the gym with me. And I'd never been to like a commercial gym. So went with her and I quit talking to the girl, but I stayed at the gym and essentially, and again, I don't advise this. Uh -oh. I started eating about 500 calories a day and would do two hours of cardio on the treadmill. So I would wake up, go to the gym, walk for an hour on an incline, come home, uh, usually like two eggs is what I'd eat. Uh, then I'd have a granola bar for lunch, go back to the gym oh. that night and then have an apple afterwards. And that was pretty much my routine. Um, but that, had, that had happened before the show. And so by the time I, I got to the show, I was, I think I was like 260 in my audition and, and you know, they ask like, what's, what's going on in your life? What's new? And I'm like, I come from a middle class family and I really like music, but that ain't exactly a cool story. So I was like, Oh, I've lost a bit of weight recently. And there's like, Oh yeah. Is that, is that something you you're doing? And I'm like, yeah. So I, I, and I don't think it was, there's no kind of like American idol forced me to be an anorexic or anything like that. Right. But I think just in my own mind, I was like, I need to give the people what they want. Mm -hmm. And it also set like a goalpost in my head of like, okay, now that I've made it through the process, I have three months before I'm on camera again, you know, how much can I do between okay. now and then? So I got really like obsessive with it and it was all I could think about. Uh, and yeah, it just, I got worse and worse. And then, you know, going out to Hollywood has never helped anyone with their eating disorder. No, <laughs> absolutely. So it, it, it got worse and worse. And eventually I got to like not eating like okay. that kind of thing. And, um, I got really sick before the show and I was just talking to my dad about this because at the time we had no clue what was going on because essentially I was, I was on the treadmill at my gym and I had a crazy headache all of a sudden like pounding headache and my vision got blurry and I go to the bathroom and I just dry heave and I'm like, man, I don't feel very good. And I talked to the the manager at the gym I was at and he's like, well, sit down and, you know, do you want something to eat? Like, do you want something to drink? And I was like, yeah, I could eat something. So I ate like a granola bar or crackers or whatever. And finally drove home and my blood pressure was like skyrocketed. Oh, and no. um, that night my headache continued and I started like full, full body shaking. Uh, oh. So my whole, the whole bed shaking as I'm lying in it. My parents have like every blanket in the house on top of me, I borderline them laying on top of me and they're holding ice packs you know, to my wrists and my ankles. And, and I'm thinking I just contracted some kind of crazy illness and I'm going to kill my parents. I'm like, you know, you guys need to leave. Like, right. But, um, and that just kind of kept, that went on for like a few days where Oof. I couldn't hold down water. Whoa, a few and days is a I long time. Went, went to the mm -hmm. hospital and they gave me some like pain killing stuff and some anti nausea stuff so I could finally eat. As soon as that wore off, I was back to normal 
I went to my doctor. They did a bunch of tests. And by the end of it, uh, my doctor just said, hey, you tested positive for everything that we tested you for, which uh, can sometimes happen if you have mono. So we think you have mono. And I was just like, okay, what do I do for it? And they're like, get rest. So I, essentially, I just kind of rode that out. But the really messed up part is I lost a ton of weight during those like that week or so. Right. And so I was jazzed. I was like, man, if I could just get that a few more times, what? You know, oh wow! I'd be where I'd be where I want to be. Uh, so yeah, that that was definitely a, a struggle for for a young man because also. Um, and, and the main reason that I don't shy away from speaking about it is I'd never heard a man talk about having like eating issues. So I never, it never occurred to me that that was a thing that, you know, us big, strong, burly, masculine men could, could have. I thought wow. that was just for models and yeah, we, women. We, men don't have problems. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah, we don't, but no. I found one. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> the one to, to find is the one you found. So, wow. I, I got to know, man, did you, did you go to some kind of counseling to get some help or, or was this just like gritting teeth? No, it got, it got worse. Okay. <laughs> so Let's hear it. it Thank you for talking about this, by the yeah, way, man. Caleb, that this is yeah, rad. Totally. Thank you. Well, look, honestly, like I am somewhat embarrassed when I talk about it, but I'm always like, man, what if someone hears this and they're like going through something similar and don't know what's going Absolutely. on? Absolutely. Yep. yep. Um, but no, I, the, the only like messed up part was after the show, um, I go home and meet up with some buddies who lift and I had never really like lifted weights. I had just gone to the gym and done cardio and, um, so they started lifting and I kind of got interested in that. I'm like, Oh, that could be cool to get stronger. And so I started eating like pretty clean um, and still not a ton and started lifting weights. And I put on like maybe five or 10 pounds. I was probably like right at 200 or so. And I start getting comments about like, it is such a shame that you did all that work and now it's all gone away. You know, oh, you no. did it all for nothing. And so that, and and that was, um, during a time that I had just moved to Nashville too. You were and, getting comments online. Oh, a ton. Yeah. Anytime okay. I posted, I would get like comments and messages about my weight. And so it started to kind of freak me out. And I was also living with my buddy. Um, and he's one of those guys that's just perpetually good looking. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I, I would eat exactly like this dude and I would gain weight and he'd be like, man, I just can't put anything on. And so it just, uh, I love him, but I hate him for that. Right, no, I get it. Yep. Yeah. And, and so honestly it was, it was a real struggle and I kind of, I dealt with some like uh, bulimia and stuff and um, it, it became something I started to just yo-yo with and never talked about, never sought out counseling or anything. Um, kept the whole bulimia aspect of it as private as I could even from people close to me. Mm -hmm. And then when COVID happened and all the gym shut down, I essentially reverted and I got so anxious because everything oh. I had planned got canceled. I had no gym to go like work out in. All I had was delivery services for food oh, and I had just bought a house and I was all alone. And so I just started eating again. And so, you know, by the end of 2020, into 2021, I was up like 40, 50 pounds and, um, gym started to reopen. Uh, I got to be really good friends with a guy who power lifted. So I just got really into lifting heavy weight, uh, hit that really hard for a while, got some pretty good numbers. And then I was like, I'm going to hurt myself if I try to become some mega lifter. Like, this isn't what I'm doing with my life. Why am I going to tear a peck? Yeah. I'm trying to write songs. Right. <laughs> Um, can't even pick up my guitar <laughs> yeah exactly so like frankly uh, um, you know I've spent a great portion of this year I've spent all of this year trying to just prioritize my mental health first and foremost which I know sounds like super cliche but um, so I've tried to not be as focused with the whole like body stuff and try to look at it from a, like a perspective of love and loving myself and wanting to feel good and feel confident. So it's still something I, I wrestle with, but I'd like to think I've, I've made some headway and it, it's know. so hard. It's so hard, man. Wow. I, I, I've, I've dealt with it my whole life too, man. Like not eating disorders, but like being heavy and getting picked on in school and 
just all of it, losing weight, gaining weight. And I came from a family. My mom was a trapeze artist. She was in the mm. travel with Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus and worked at Circus Circus in Vegas for a long time. And uh, you had to be like completely in shape to do that job, like for real, for real, like ath- athlete level. And so if you were the least bit heavy in that family, you were called out and, and it was a problem. And it's tough, man. It's, it's tough to uh, get past the idea that what you look like isn't what you're worth. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's hard. And I'm 52 years old, man. I still, to this day, like I have to remind myself that it, the, the two things are not connected. They don't, that one has nothing to do with the other. It's what it comes down to at the end of the day is how do I treat the people around me and do I love myself? Those are the two things that really matter. And um, it's it's hard though. And Well, and also con- like in how you feel because I know a lot of it is um, like what you're saying is like literally weight-based, like, you know, more or less, but like you weren't feeling good, you know? Yeah. That's, that's a a really good part to focus on post, you know, all that stuff is like your barometer. Like, how am I feeling? Like, yeah. Well, and, and it's, it was trippy for me too, because, you know, I grew up heavy and was heavy all my life and I was an athletic kid, but I was always just like a bigger boy. Right. And I think I always had it in my mind, you know, looking at like these rock stars that if I could just get skinny, you know, I would, that's my best self. Mm. And what sucked is I got down to dangerously skinny and hated how I looked just as much as I hated when I was obese. And so like, there was never a payoff. And that was what was so sick and twisted about it is there wasn't like a spot I could get to yeah. where I was like, this is good. It was always horrible. I always felt horrible about how I looked and obviously like how I physically felt. And so I think I also just kind of got fatigued with it too. Just like, man, what's the point? Like, this yeah, sucks. It does. I, I'm glad you're doing all right now, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Congratulations for pulling out. I mean, your family yeah. is super supportive, I would imagine, of of the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. I, you know, it's I, it's one of those things. I uh, once I kind of realized, and also this is something I didn't really even realize until like two years ago. It was it was after. I'd put some weight back on that I was like, Oh, I had an eating disorder. Is that what that's called? Oh. And I, I had, I had no clue. And like, I talked to my mom about it and she had confided that she had dealt with it before and that kind of thing. And, and like I was talking, you know, I think it's my life is 10 times better than my parents, uh, parents lives were because I have excellent parents. Um, yeah. so even like my dad, cause my dad's just like the, the manliest man in the world to me, especially, uh, never seen him break. And I remember talking to him about it and I was like, have you ever dealt with anything like that? He's like, no, I don't think so. He's like, well, it was that summer. I didn't really eat. Um, uh, so I could be skinnier. It's like, I think it stunted my growth, but other than that, I don't think yeah, so. no, I never had any problems other than making myself shorter from not eating. Yeah. yeah. Like, now, now you're five eleven. You could have been six foot. But. Look, Caleb, wow. kudos to you for talking about it. Cause I mean, I don't want to tell my mom's business, but she'd be okay with me saying it. Like I grew up with hearing her puking all the time. It was just normal. And she like being dysfunctional about food and about eating and about weight was my normal. It was, it was expected kind of like Aaron was saying with his parents. And the one thing that never happened until much, much later in life, I'm 45. Um, was we finally were able to talk about it. Like she never talked about that at all. So like your kids seeing you like doing that, like smelling it, like trying to understand what is even happening. Like my mom did do the coffee method. It was like coffee and cigarettes, coffee and cigarettes, that coffee and cigarettes, you know? Um, and so like the fact that you're able to talk about it, the mental health aspect, um, f- not saving it for later is really going to, help you so much by by doing what you're doing sharing it just like talking about it there's yeah. no there's no judgment you've already gone through it and you're you're on the other side re- come, rising out of that so for you to share that is a really um it's, it's important because 
you're in the industry where that matters to everybody. Well, and I think, you I, know, I think the, the lie of the world around us right now is that everybody's okay. You know, you look on social media and everybody's smiling and having a steak and on vacation and that, oh, that's how people live. No, man, we, we all are struggling going through shit, you know? And it, yeah. it also means a lot like Mel, we're already thanking you for being so honest. We pride ourselves in you know, going on seven years of doing our podcast. We are brutally honest at the, it would have been for years about our health, our struggles. And like you said, if this helps somebody and that's what we've learned. Every time we do something where it's, where you kind of feel like, shit, did, should I have shared that? Like, man, I'm sharing a lot of detail. We always get positive feedback from somebody that it helped. And yeah. for you to do this on you know our platform and stuff, you, thank you so much, brother. That yeah, man, means a lot cool, to, to us and our listeners. You know, one thing that I wonder, Caleb, is the discomfort that you felt inside yourself and the pain that you're de that you were dealing with and are dealing with uh, just period do you think that that has been uh, uh has infused itself into the way that you write music what's up everybody if you're like me and you're trying to do better for yourself and what you eat in this new year i have something really cool for you Factors delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day way easier. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You're going to have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. What are you waiting for? Sign up and save. They've done all the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. So here's what you got to do. Head to factormeals.com slash no simple road 50 and use the code no simple road 50 to get 50 percent off your first box and two free wellness shots per box while subscription is active that's code no simple road 50 at factormeals.com take all the guesswork out of trying to do the right thing for your body fuel up easy and fast go check out factor yeah it's it's interesting um so it in the and thank you all for for that You're welcome, uh, man. i think in the in the spirit of vulnerability i'll i'll tell you it's a, a year and some change ago i kind of hit my my lowest point i'd been at mm -hmm. and uh so almost a year ago exactly i started kind of um investing in my mental health okay. you know i was very dismissive of like therapy and sitting around talking about feelings what's that going to do like go out there and be better like, why do you want to sit and talk about bad stuff? Like, you're just going to stay in the cycle of being a loser. That was my thought. Uh, and then finally, I got to a point where, like, I was, I, like, had no interest in anything. And it was, it was very, very rough. Um, and I decided to make efforts to try to enjoy life for once. And, <laughs> uh, and essentially, like, I had the realization that, I had just spent my whole life for whatever reason, really, truly hating myself and like the realest sense of the world of the word. Like I have been passionately picking apart myself and rooting against myself and dismissing myself my whole life. And like, just wasn't my own friend and kind of had the realization first off of like, why, yeah. you know, I, I don't think I'm a bad person. I like how I treat people there's a lot of things about me I like. So why do I like hate this dude? Right. You know? And I would, I would also like n never treat my enemies the way I was treating myself. And so I think, um, having that realization and further in that, that pathway and trying to understand all of that has been incredibly liberating with like my art and yeah. with writing and music and, uh, this record we just made was kind of birthed out of that whole period. And it was the most fun I've ever had making music and writing music. And I think it was because I was able to tap in to 
the motive of just wanting to have a good time with music mm -hmm. and make something that I myself would be proud of, you know, doing it for me, truly for the first time, uh, had no thoughts of will people like this or anything, just I get one life and then I'm dead. And then it's up to you what you want to think goes on after. Yeah. So mm -hmm. am I really going to spend it worrying about what all these imaginary people think, <laughs> you know, these hypothetical people? So it, I, it, to answer your question in an overly long winded no, uh, I answer, love it. I love it. It, it's been incredibly helpful. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm kind of just now living and just now starting to actually make things. You like know, wow. it, right on. You know, yeah. it, the best, um, <laughs> Not all of it, but some of the best art comes through folks, folks that have been through hell. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Not not all of it. Some people live a great life and make beautiful art. I'm not saying you have to go through shit to be a good artist, but yeah, a lot, a good portion of it comes through the struggle and understanding that life is a gift, and you only get one, like you just said, and. Look, man, let's be honest. You've been blessed, Caleb, with some talent. Yeah, you really yeah. are. I mean, yeah. we haven't so we haven't talked about that part well, yet. We're getting there. Yeah, yeah, we're working you, that way. You've been blessed with some talent and like to not share that with people in a really like honest and full way is not fair because you've been given a gift. So when you get given a gift, your the job is to share that, right? And and uh it, it's tough though, man, like I know that feeling of like looking in the mirror and not liking who you see and, and it, it goes much deeper than weight. Right. And, right. and, uh, what you said about, I wouldn't treat my worst enemy like that. Like the, the self talk that goes on. I, I, a while back I was like, wow, the way I speak to myself in my head, I wouldn't speak to somebody that I fucking hated like that. How, how dare I? do that to me like yeah and and so finding okay. finding the way through and out the other side of that and then just being conscious that it's there that it's a thing and and catching myself when it when it goes down has been a game changer and it's and it's helped in every aspect of my life and i'm sure you can attest to the same thing and it yeah. the album that you made dude it I don't want to be all gushy and weird, but it's, it's, it's amazing, dude. It's really, really amazing work. And I asked you the question because I can hear the, the connection now. It, it, now that I've heard a little bit of your story, the music makes a lot more sense. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll be a little gushy and stuff ahead. about it too, Please. because li listening to it, I mean, listening to all your stuff, uh, but, but like the new album, it ha it touches on so many emotional levels and stuff from really heavy pulling at the heartstrings to to the, the like the, the the drinking song and i want to personally thank you i work in the cannabis industry up here in portland oregon the got stone song the oh, like, yeah. the, the the humor and realness and that too i d i just love you you touch you just kind of it's like a arc of all these yeah. different emotions and everything. And like Aaron said, now hearing your story coming up to this, you being so proud and, and healthy doing this album, it makes sense. And it, it, it's amazing, man. And your, your talent, man, I, you're, you're sharing it like you should be. And thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I, it makes me overwhelmingly happy to hear you say that. Cause that's, that's what I've thought about the whole record was, yeah, obviously it's not sequenced in order of like me writing it, but um, it's really cool for me because I can listen to it and clearly know like which Caleb wrote it, you know, like oh, where wow. I was, yeah. what, what part of it. So I clearly see like the pain I went through, the acceptance I went through, moments where I was like, why the hell am I so serious and sad all the time? You know, like, like got stoned was just because I'm a massive John Prime fan mm -hmm. and I'm also a fan of cannabis. And <laughs> so it was, I, I was listening to illegal smile oh. and that whole song is about like 
you know, stuff's kind of bad around here, but, you know, you may see me tonight with an illegal smile. And so I just wanted to write, like, my my version of that, my That's interpretation cool. of that. And uh, it was based on true events. Um, <laughs> and it was written in this chair. So, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm glad you liked that one. And I remember oh, yeah. I was nervous showing it to my parents. And, you know, because I, I, like, grew up in kind of a smaller community. And yeah bit of like what are what are so and so gonna think i was like it's the truth mom like I, this is something that happened so if they don't like it then they can live in their truth what but this one mine. right on yeah. man the way yeah. the way you wrote it too like the lyric like like hey what's like basically like, what's the problem i'm just trying to relax my mind and be healthy in a way you know it, the way you put it out there is, is just amazing and this is the this is the time that we can do it in now. It's the legality of it, more and more states getting on board, more talk about federal legalization. It it's yeah. it's just cool that you do that because there's you know there more and more people are doing that. Like I mean one one of the major ones is like Billy Strings being yeah. so open about it and very open about his not drinking and not enjoying drink, but enjoying this because it it makes him healthy and a better person. Yeah. And honestly, I felt way more like moral implications and weight from putting on a drinking song on the record versus, you know, versus putting that one. I think that's such a more dangerous substance yeah. that does yeah. ruin lives and kill yep. people. It, ruin families. Dangerous yeah. and very accepted, especially, well, well, in all worlds and very much so in country music. You know, so yeah. I, mean, I grew up my whole life listening to country from a grandpa, his influence, and, you know, back to like, uh, pause playboys and and you know like the, like the old school cowboy the you know uh tearing my beer <laughs> you know stuff like that and it was always about alcohol and now that's that's shifting a little yeah well the only reason that the the uh because i have a song at least i'm drunk on the record yeah that got written because you know i i drank I'm, i've never been like a big drinker but uh and this this is the first uh, instance of this it turns out when i got really sad i drank more mm. and oh, that's weird yeah no one's ever done that, <laughs> I, never heard of that before. Uh, I broke some ground that's cool and so, <laughs> so i quit i quit drinking for like six months or so like uh quite quite a bit just because you know I, i've had there's alcoholism in my family and i i just didn't want to be that guy so i just quit altogether and I got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm not an alcoholic. Cause like, I'm not thinking about it. I don't miss it. Uh, and I was out with some buddies and they were drinking and I was just like, you know what? Like I feel really good right now. And I'm not doing this as a means to escape or anything. Like I'm doing this with my friends celebrating life. So I did indulge. And that was kind of my point of view about the whole thing was like, if we could just make a honky tonk country song that everyone thinks is like about drinking, but like for me, that whole song's about like I'm drinking, but now it's not from a place of sadness. Yeah. So, and, you know, you writing those songs, it's as a society up until recently, it was like the pink, the pink elephant in society that nobody talks about, like having like enjoying cannabis and like if you smoked weed, you were like this horrible, horrible person. But alcohol. if you got drunk every weekend or after work, you're totally fine and normal and it's all good. And so like, there's like this big, like I said, pink elephant in the, in society that's saying you can't do this. The minute somebody talks about it, Oh, you're ostracized or whatever. Or parents like coworkers. Well, I can't believe this. So for you to, um, let that song out of your head and, and share it. That is huge for, for society's like standards. Like, you know what I mean? To be able to enjoy a song like that is a big deal. And especially like Apple said in the, in the country vein, cause that really wasn't kind of, it was, it was you know, maybe another, uh, other different types of genres of music. Willie Nelson. Yeah. Willie Nelson did a little bit, but you know, Wailing. we started. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, how did mom and dad take it when they heard the song? Uh, I'll tell you this for the, for the whole album. Uh, so I flew out of Atlanta to Texas to make this album uh, and flew back. So my parents picked me up from the airport after I'd made this album. 
And, uh, mm-hmm. not, you know, I was less worried about the, the got stone thing. Cause you know, neither of my parents do anything really, but, uh, I like my great uncle, uh, he's, he's passed away now. So I don't think there's any problem me sharing this. Like he, uh, he served in Vietnam and when he came back, he just started growing flour like at his house. Cause we had a family that, um, before my time, but it sounds like everyone was kind of like an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. And so my uncle was just like, Hey, I'm growing this. If y'all will smoke this and maybe not drink or at least drink less, I'll give you as much as you want. Oh, wow. So wow. It was, it's, it was in the family. So I was less nervous okay. about got stoned yeah. versus like, uh, you know, like Silverado, there's like sexual implications and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, I'm a little nervous showing this to my mommy. Like she thinks. <laughs> <laughs> Understandably. Sweet boy. You know? know. And so, but I remember I'm sitting in the back seat. My dad's driving. My mom's up here. And I was like, all right, I'm going to play this for y'all because literally if it wasn't for you, this wouldn't be happening. Mm-hmm. And also my dad's like an old school country fan. So there's like a lot of weird stuff going on in this record yeah. that isn't traditional. And so I'm like, they may hate this. So I hit play and I'm just like kind of sitting nervously and I play the whole thing. And they like turned around and looked at me and they were like blown away. And, and that right in that moment, nothing else mattered. Like in yeah, terms yeah. of if articles were written about how horrible it was and a disgrace, I'd be like, well, screw you. I had fun. And my parents like it. So. <laughs> yes. And it's, and it's and it's not like that's the first track on the album or anything. So it's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I exactly. I really the my favorite track on the album is Things to Burn. Oh, thank you. That's that that one hit home for me, man. I yeah. I have a a history um of burning things and, there you go. and bridges. Yeah. Yeah, I almost called the album Music for Arsonists. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good title. Holy that shit. Good. I want to hear about that short movie that you did. That was such a cool first of all dope concept so cool and like just the music was amazing yeah, that album. like the whole from beginning to finish from when i started watching it on youtube to the very end i was really impressed and just kind of like whoa like i want to hear like the background and the horror part like all of it, it just seemed like a fun idea executed perfectly yeah it's it's funny because um i love that video it was really cool getting to do it. We did it for like practically nothing. I'm, I'm one of my best, the, the best things about my life is the people I have in it. And I'm surrounded by people who are far more talented than me and are so gracious uh, with their time. So, but it, at the flip side of that is that was kind of during the beginning of, of like my kind of dark time. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so essentially it was just me going, I need to do something. I need to do something creative. I need to do something to occupy my time. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of those, some of those songs were written beforehand, but some of them were written like during the the midst of it. Like uh, there's a song freedom off of it. That's like it's one of the sadder things I've ever written. And uh, I remember ironically enough, I was talking to my, my old pastor about it. Uh, I, I, Cause I called him during it. And, uh, he was a, a clinical psychologist before he became a pastor. And oh, wow. so he, he can offer a wide thing of knowledge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So kind of talking to him about everything. And I was telling him I was, I was making music and writing and he's like, well, good. He said, let it all out. It's you know, cathartic ventilation. He says mm-hmm. that right now the, the room's filled with smoke. He's like, crack a window if you need to. Oh, so wow. That was just me wanting to, to put something out and, Honestly, just in the spirit of full vulnerability at the time, I was like, for one reason or another, this may be like the last thing I do. Uh, and so I, but I just forced myself into having something to think about and do artistically as a means to kind of escape where I was at. And yeah, I, I have like my thoughts of what the whole video is about, but it was just, you know, Halloween was coming around. I'm a big horror movie fan. My favorite show is Dexter. So I wanted yeah. to just like really push myself. I've never acted or anything. 
So it was just kind of a, a fun, hey, what if I do this? And at the time, I didn't really give a shit what the implications would be. So I just did it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, but I, I think I, I titled it um, the EP songs I'll never play again. Yeah, I had I didn't have the foresight to know that uh, eventually I really won't play these. <laughs> but it ended, <laughs> it ended up working out that way. But that's kind of cool how you channeled that energy that that's wasn't so yeah positive into that like and it was gritty and horror and and it was still a positive outcome for you that's dope yeah good job thank you very good job much. on that yeah. and that it, my understanding that that one too you that that you you did that yourself that was self-produced you did all this so that yeah. yeah myself and my uh my drummer he's a producer as well uh cameron mclaren and we had tracked most of the songs is just demos and um i hit him up and i was like hey these four out of the six demos we did i want to finish them and i want to record two other songs and like let's just have kind of an emo album disguised as country uh and so that's what we went with that's right. that's so cool. well done yeah. okay it. so where'd you get the green couch man <laughs> the green couch uh me and my previous partner found it on Facebook Marketplace. Uh-huh. It used to live, I believe, in a dentist office. All right. And uh, so we bought it and just brought it here. It's actually pretty uncomfortable. So it got thrown into the basement. And then when I started the idea of wanting to do a podcast, I was like, well, we'll definitely sit on this couch because it's down here. And so, yeah, then the green couch just became its, its whole brand. It's the name, yeah. It, how how are you like doing a podcast i enjoy it i uh at this point i've only talked and had on like friends and people i love and admire uh-huh. so honestly it's been super easy because more or less we're just sitting and talking shit until it's about an hour and i'm like all right that's enough <laughs> uh, Done. but it's been cool it's it's been really cool and you know, I've gotten the opportunity to kind of do, I've done some emceeing and stuff for festivals. Um, so it's been cool to kind of cultivate the whole like interviewer side of things. It's uh, fun, isn't it? It's super fun. I, I love the challenge of like trying to ask different questions, trying to catch the people off guard. Like that's, that's my favorite thing. I'll, I'll do like MC these festivals where I'll have a minute and a half to interview like riley green or cody johnson or like these big country people i'm like how do i ask them stuff that makes them remember this interview versus the other 200 they'll do this year so i I really enjoy the challenge and and as far as doing my own podcast i love just getting to showcase to other people like people i love um so it's it's been a blast and it's you know just kind of been something fun to do it and we're We've recently gotten back into doing it and have a bunch of episodes in the vault. So, yeah, I'm excited well, about I, it. Yeah, man, I cool. saw you mentioned this is something that the three of us had said, and it, there's a point years ago that it became, well, it, it, during COVID is yeah. when it really became relevant, that it was our therapy. And you had mentioned mm-hmm. something like that about sharing thought. You get to know yourself. We've we known each other a lot. Me and Aaron have been friends 40 years. They've been married 25, 26, 26 years now. So long history, but we have learned stuff about ourselves and each other doing this that we probably wouldn't have if it wasn't for the podcast. And we found it, we find it therapy. In fact, what, very rarely do we have a weekend or a week off of doing this. And, and we, we've all said the same thing when that has happened. It's like, Oh, we have the weekend to like just do nothing. We're bored immediately. We're all like, well, like, like, like we it should feels be like we should we should have an interview today, <laughs> and we need to do things. So I'm just curious your take on that as far as like the therapeutic benefit. Yeah, no, it's it's so fun, uh, and it, it's interesting. Like it's cool, especially when it's more free form. I, you'll have these conversations that you wouldn't even necessarily have in private. Yes. It just kind of provokes different. And honestly, there's been plenty of moments where I'm like talking and I'm like, I've never thought about what I think about this. Or, or- <laughs> yes. Isn't that, that's, that's one of my favorite things. Like I look at doing this as, as like when you get on stage with a group of musicians and you guys are just like improvising. 
Yep. You're like, we're going to be in the key of A, go. That's what these conversations are for us. Like, I don't write a list of questions for you, man. I just, I just want to get to know you and see who you are and hang out. That's it. That's where we're coming from. And I, I found that th- just by having that attitude towards it and approaching it, like getting to know somebody as, as opposed to interviewing somebody that it's the most fun thing you can possibly do. Like I, so fun. I agree. And I think it's way as a listener, I'm way more interested in hearing how someone converses versus how they answer a set of questions mm-hmm. that their publicist sent to them in advance. <laughs> Brutal. Okay. So yeah. K- Caleb, do you want to try something? Uh Oh, sure. Um, we'll flip the script and you ask us three questions as if we were on your podcast. Okay. Welcome to the green couch. Thank you. Oh, wow. Thanks. He was right into it. I'd like to ask the couple a question. Okay. All right. Six years of marriage. That's a pretty big feat. You're sitting beside each other. And so far I've seen no cause of physical violence or any signs of any kind of detestment. What would you say the secret has been to stay together for 26 years? You go first. Wow. Um, I think the, I don't know if it's a secret, but I just really love him. <laughs> that Like for real. And like all the other stuff that happens with a relation, like, okay, you love your mom, you love your dad. Sometimes you get annoyed with them. Sometimes they're on your nerves. Or you're a teacher, you get annoyed with it, whatever. But like when you find the person you're supposed to be with, annoyances is just kind of like bad weather for a minute. You know, it's just like, oh, it's not going to be like this forever. That's going to rain for like 10 minutes and then it's done. So like it's just I'm in I'm in love. I'm still in love after 26 years. So it's easy for me to act like it because I'm in it. OK. Um. Wow. I love you, too. <laughs> so he's like this is like ditto next uh, yeah I, I love her back just like that apple no Lame. Um, <laughs> all right is, can i be long-winded on on the green couch uh the green couch is a comfy place you do what you need all right, to. All right i'm gonna be long-winded so when mel and i met i was a complete dumpster fire of a human being i was 20 Four ish. Four ish, yeah. And strung out on heroin and just a mess. And uh, we started hanging out and got together. And um, I started trying to clean up my act and had a really hard time. And uh, we went through some really rocky shit. Like gnarly, rocky stuff. All the shit that everybody goes through, you no, know? No, everybody don't go well, through. Well, a lot of people go through. Stuff. Yeah. And there was one moment in our relationship where we were having really, really difficult time. And Mel had said, I think we need to take a break. And I said, um, no. Uh, we stood up in front of everybody that we know and made a promise to each other. And I meant that shit as for better or worse. And we're in the worst. And I meant that. And I, there's no quitting. We're, we're pushing and we did. And so that's a really long winded way to say, just don't quit no matter what. Now caveat, if somebody's beating the crap out of you or, you know, there's, there's instances where things are, but, if life is mostly manageable and you're just going through some rocky stuff, just don't quit, man. You know, if you, if you love each other, then you just, you keep going. And, and like Mel said, the, the weather will clear. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Apple in the, in the spirit of deep, dark, um, oh, shit. Deep, deep questions. Um, and forgive me for not knowing the lore. The name Apple, where does that come from? <laughs> good, good, good question. Uh, well, Apple. Besides his rosy cheeks? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or my big red head, you know, the redness and my complexion. Uh, Apple. 
I get it. A- Apple is my last name. Uh, okay. It's my full name is James Michael Apple. Um, Apple has become my name in, in third grade. Uh, I was in a classroom with four Jameses. Jimmy, Jay. so she, the teacher was like, you're James, you're Jimmy, you're Jim. Well, you ran out of there unless she's going to call me Seamus or something. So she was like, you, you have a unique name and it suits us. So I, she's like, I'm going to call you Apple. And it stuck ever since then. And then the, this story, some people know it. Apple actually is French, comes from Appel, A-P-P-E-L. My grandfather, who is is actually uh, my my dad's adoptive father, um, his name was A P P E L, and that got switched when he was in World War II, like on all like official records and everything, and just left it that way because it was more American. It fit in more. I mean, apple, like <laughs> apple pie, yeah, well, it's baseball. More American than that. Yeah, so that that's where that comes from. It's a French uh, name, Appel, that got switched up, and it's served me very well my whole life. People remember me. They they say it suits my personality. People like they, I'm glad you asked that because I that was this is one of the first times I didn't offer it up. Usually I offer it up like when I introduce myself at the beginning of the show. I usually say my name's Apple. That's my last name. You know my name's James. Like I feel like I need to explain it to people right away, but I didn't obviously for some reason now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Do you feel any pressure to have an iPhone? <laughs> dude i love that question no, i never felt any pressure i just always liked apple products i've always yeah. this is kind of a joke and i've, I've always you thought, like luxury i've always have found a more aesthetically pleasing than the other phones and everything which is a joke we have a friend that says i'm not aesthetically pleasing because he doesn't like apple products but I, my, my, I pressure my dad all that. My dad is an anti Apple person. Like, does, and his never, name is freaking Bob Apple. Yeah. And I, but yeah, and his name's Bob Apple, like bobbing for apples. And I, I give him a hard time all because he's like, well, you know, let's go on Zoom. And I'm like, well, we could FaceTime if you got an Apple. <laughs> you know, life would be a lot easier if you owned an Apple product, Dad. And hey, Apple, that, that, not you, but the company, just if you're listening, that was a plug. We want our money. Yeah. Non spawn right now. We'd like to have you as a sponsor. <laughs> it, would, uh, it would be strange to see you with a samsung to your ear yeah right. <laughs> apple's got a google, I, I, google, I, google yeah, Pixel. I i agree it, it should just kind of built in so yeah really no pressure but i put pressure on uh, my father for for not <laughs> for not having an apple all the time now it's just like an ongoing joke because he's not going to give in he likes yeah. his galaxy whatever and you know but I, I, I love a great question. Um, Caleb. Good job, Caleb. Yeah, thank you for that. Wait, we, we need it. We yeah, need those are it. great Wait. answers all around. It's here, here for the green couch. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you got coming up? You you got any new music coming out? Or are, are we just well, doing, we got this album, doing right? the album right now? Or Currently, I'm, I'm learning that because um, I've been living with this album since May. So for me, it feels ancient, uh-huh. but I recognize that most people haven't heard it. So I'm, I'm trying to, to force myself to, to live with that. I'm, I'm currently writing the next uh, thing and um, no, no real news to share on that other than Southern Galactic will not be my last album. So Ooh. yeah, that's I, good to hear. I, this is what I want to, um, for everybody who hasn't heard it, right. They've never heard one track or maybe they just stumbled up upon a track and didn't bother to listen to the album from the person who created it, what do you want them to know about or, or, or what is something special about the album that they can kind of like, you know, listen for, or, or, you know, get excited about. I have a two part answer. All oh. right. Musically. I would say the, I would want people to know that the goal in mind was to honor the tradition of country music and all the things about country music that I love. I love so many genres of music. Country is my favorite, and that's not because I was born in the South. It's really how I feel. And so I wanted to honor that, honor the things I love about country the most, uh, while also pushing forward sonically 
in a way that I feel I haven't heard other people do. Ooh. Whether that whether I achieve that goal or not, it's fully up to the listener. But um, you know, I think the the we have like a whole perception of country music as like your dad and grandpa's music. Yes. And like cookie cutter basic people. Uh, in my mind, country music has always been the source of the most like to me, countries like punk rock totally. uh, Ooh, yeah. or punk rock, you know, and the people that I love in country music and elsewhere, but country and especially were always pushing forward in some type of way. You know, Waylon Jennings, when he started making the music we know him for, people were like, is this country, um, you know, Hank Jr., Willie Nelson all these people took what country music was and then eventually did it how they saw it fit. And that's why we love them. So I tried to approach it with that in mind. Um, so, uh, and then uh, artistically speaking, I would just say I made it a point to try to be as vulnerable as possible in this album. So there are happy times, there are sad times, reflective, somber, all things in between and I tried to be as transparent as possible because uh here's my my hippie spiel I feel like music is one of the most powerful forces we have oh, because yeah. it really connects people and it's insane to me that a song that was written by a guy who has not been alive since I've been on this planet he wrote a song and now it's touching me today or that there's people that don't speak the language but a song impacts in the same way and I think that that is amplified the most when people are just as honest as they can be. So that was my goal. And hopefully I've accomplished it. And uh, and if they don't like it, don't tell me. I'm very sensitive. <laughs> yeah. Keep it to yourself. Yeah, we don't have anything nice but to say. But share the nice stuff because we right. need to hear it. <laughs> I'll take all that. And there, you know, I will well say, put. I will say that was a beautiful way to answer that question. And second... Yeah. There's some very psychedelic stuff in here. Yeah. So thank you for that, by the way. Yeah. I'm always, I'm always looking out for the ones looking in. Yes. <laughs> I, I was paying well, attention. I, right I was going to say, man. Aaron, I'm going to do the Aaron's going to cram, but, but I, I too oh, often no. in the past have like made comparisons to other artists, but oh, yeah. Aaron agreed with me on this one. You brought it up when I was out on the patio listening. I was oh, listening yeah, to yeah, some yeah. more of your stuff this morning and, and he goes, stop it for a second. I stopped it. He's like, doesn't he, doesn't he remind you of Sturgill Simpson a little, which is one of our favorites. And, yeah, and so I mean, love that Sturgill's the goat. So that's that's yes. like yes, if me, I played basketball like Michael Jordan. Oh, uh, oh cool. okay, cool, cool. <laughs> that that's I've I've seen people like get upset when compared to someone. That's that's the best comparison I could get. If if I go down in the hit <laughs> as like a Sturgill wannabe that's still better than most people so i'm stoked on that cool. I, I think you're awesome. ago, and uh i hope i never meet him because <laughs> I, you're, you're gonna it's gonna happen trust me Caleb, i'm just you, glad you took it that way because I, I always i always do it but it's a thing i do and, and it's meant in the most flattering way but i get it a lot of people don't want to hear a comparison that you yeah. sound like this and that but you I figured I could say it to you at this point, getting towards the end of the interview, because you have a wonderful humility about yourself, a, a sense of humor, mm -hmm. everything that I figured that, that that would be taken the way it was meant to be. Yeah. <clears throat> Apple, I appreciate it. And, and just so you know, you could never say anything that would make me not love you. So it's <laughs> one last thing to see if I can make you know. I, I meant to throw out earlier, dude. I love the cover of Post, oh, Post Malone's Malone. better now. That trend when I first when I saw that, like like it was, it was like, okay, this will be interesting. It translates so well to country. The way yeah. you sing it, the little slower tempo, everything about it is right on and, and the album and the and the cover of the single. <laughs> I bet that's a baby picture of you. Yeah. The, yeah, I love it again. Like the kind of humility and the huge sense of humor you, you have comes through. You didn't hear from him after that by any chance, did you? No, and it's been a real kick in the nads to see him in Nashville cutting it up with every country singer on the CMAs. But Daddy Malone didn't send me one text. Oh. Come on, post. <laughs> oh, wait. No, but here's the thing: when he does make his country album, I will. 
quietly take full credit. <laughs> good. You, as as well you should, Caleb. Yes. Caleb, exactly. man, you stand on your own two feet for sure. Yeah. You really, it doesn't matter how many people are before you or after you. You've got your own name, man, and you've got your own style, and I really dig it. We dig it. And thank you for sharing it. And and more than your music, thanks for sharing yourself, like, for real. Like, yeah. I think that's my favorite part of what we do is, yeah, we get to talk to these awesome artists and stuff, but, like, we get to understand your mind a little bit more and, and hear that the heart of what we're dancing and clapping and jiving to. So thank you for all of it, man, for going through your, your shit and being willing to talk about it openly. I it's, it's not, it doesn't go over our head, man. It and, goes uh, right here. You know, you have, thank you. you have three people in your corner from now on, man. Hell when, yeah. you got, when you have uh, anything to promote, you, you need anything. You just say the word and we're here, man. Oh, thank you very much. I'd, I'd love it just so I could be back on here again. It'd you be got great. It. Absolutely. Right on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you will be a return guest. I, I <laughs> All right, Caleb, that. if you ever find yourself in Portland, Oregon, hit us, hit up. us up. You We'd got a love place to, to stay. Hang out. At this point, I just I need to make a point of doing it just to hang with y'all. It'd be right great. on. There dude. it is. All right. right on, man. Enjoy <laughs> the rest of your Sunday, brother. <laughs> and awesome. T- tell mom, and, tell mom and dad the no simple. Cr- r- no simple road crew says hello and well done. Yeah, well done, <laughs> mom, dad. <laughs> Take care, right on, Talk to you soon. Right. peace. Aww. dope human being. What? Yeah, did you see his sweet little eyes? Oh my totally. gosh! Yep, he is sharp. I wouldn't. Sweetheart. I wouldn't have said he had sweet little eyes, but he did. He, he does. He, he's got. He's he got did. a light shining in there. You very compassionate. See very. And he went through. So that that was awesome that he shared that because he's gone through some hard stuff. And it sounds like this this new album is like the end, like like coming to terms and mm-hmm. learning and putting out something he's so proud of and honest with. And Man, I've said it before and I'll say it again. That is one of my favorite things about doing No Simple Road is having a conversation with an artist like that and then going back and listening to the album that we just talked about or yeah. whatever because you hear it in a totally new light and kind of from the perspective of the artist as opposed to the perspective of somebody that's just listening to the album and doesn't know them. Yeah. You know what I and mean? You yes. know what, Caleb? Some people like big guys. A lot of people like big guys. I'm one of them. What? I'm just saying, big guys out there, they got a lot of love. So you don't got to get too little, Caleb. <laughs> when Caleb, and, and K- <laughs> Caleb, Caleb, this is to you guys and, and to Caleb, like, like, he looks great. He looks amazing. Like, like he got rid of a lot of the way he learned a very valuable looks- lesson and now knows how to conduct himself and and looks wonderful and it has that southern charm yes which is, yeah that, that that goes a long way Caleb. Oh, just boy. fyi i think next time we have caleb on we need to have bryce over <laughs> yes and and just let them i think if they talked something would happen and they would like merge into I, one I, I, I think they would lean to I think more of the southern oh, you draw yeah, for sure. and everything would come draw. out and well when you need a light show um, hit up Bryce yeah, Caleb he, he does dope yeah, lighting. He's gonna do lighting and your brother um, everybody go go check out Caleb Lee Hutchinson Southern Galactic Southern Galactic it is out now on all the streaming platforms check out the Green Couch podcast that's right and uh m- Watch the video for songs I'll never sing again. Yeah, it's it's really really cool. It's amazing. I've got to do that this evening. That's the it's one thing really I've checked good. out it's just like a, about everything of Caleb's, but I didn't uh, check out the the. It's like seventeen minute. Yeah, yeah. reminded me. I gotta like watch a, it tonight. A nineteen eighties B slasher movie. That's especially after him him being a horror fan. I'm not as much anymore that I've got older, but that used to be my jam. This was a perfect amount day. of horror. I want to. I want to. I'm looking forward good. to watching this this evening. Um, and then, hey. If you're out there and you're struggling with an eating disorder or wait, don't wait until you're passing out at the gym or falling out at home to get some help, man. There's help available all over the place. Reach out to a counselor or a friend or a parent or somebody that you trust. Let them know what's going on because there's only one of you in this world. You cannot be duplicated period you are completely unique and beautiful and you deserve to be happy and if you're struggling it's not okay 
to and, just just grin and bear it. And so as you get just, some help, as you just heard too, uh, you are not you are not alone. Everybody has problems and suffers through things. That that like, to me, that's an important thing to know is that you are not alone. A lot Michael of Jackson's song run, rings true still. That mm-hmm. you are not alone song. It's dope. You remember that? No. No, you don't remember it. Not even a little bit. Another day has come. Nope. And I'm still here with you. Mm-mm. Still not ringing Tell a I was going to say, I thought I knew most Michael Jackson no, style. Really? Yeah. You are not alone. Oh, yeah. Okay. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Okay. And, I got and it. then the rest of it. No, but I want to hear the rest. I've never heard that before. Can you <laughs> tell me? Mel just kills it with those. Remembering the lyrics. And... All right. Everybody, we love you. And we'll be back on Monday with another episode. And until then, uh, smile at a stranger. Take care of each other. Safety third. Hydrate. And you know what? It's always the right time to go buy yourself a new pair of shoes. It yes. doesn't matter if it's the holidays or just after the holidays. Make sure you, the, make sure you get those new socks at the same time. Yeah, though. you got to get new socks. And then when you get the new socks, you get yourself a new pair of kicks. And like Caleb said, you'll be a whole new person that day and, and probably the next day. You're actually a brand new person every moment of every day. Think about that. Check on your friends and spread a little holiday cheer. We love you all. Peace. Cobain. Of George Michael, of Otis Redding, of Amy Winehouse, of Michael Hutchins, Bob Marley. This is the story of Prince. It's a new podcast series. About how they died, why they died, and why we're still talking about them so long after. It's like nothing you've ever heard before. It's storytelling. But it's more than that, because rock stars... They tell us how we feel. They change our mood. They change the clothes we wear. The people we hang out with. The way we remember things. It's them who give us those ludicrous moments. The ones where you're... Jumping around, singing your heart out, feeling understood. And it's those moments we'll help you remember. The ones you're thinking about right now. That feeling. That feeling. It's coming soon from Crowd Network. Just search for Death of a Rockstar on your podcast app. And subscribe now.